This is a story of a man who changed football world. Year 1990. Bosman, professional Belgian football player, employed from 1988 by RC Lige, Belgian first division club, expiring contract 30 June 1990, with average monthly salary of 120,000 BFR, including bonuses. April 21st, 1990. RC Lige offered Bosman a new contract for one season reducing his pay to 30,000 BFR, which was minimum permitted by UBSFA rules. Bosman refused and was put on the transfer list. The compensation fee was set to 11,743,000 BFR. Compulsory transfer failed, since no clubs showed interest. So Bosman made contact with US Dunkirk, French second division club, which offered Bosman monthly salary of 100,000 BFR plus signing bonus of 900,000. July 27, 1990. A contract was also concluded between RC Lige and US Dunkirk for one year temporary transfer, against payment by US Dunkirk to RC Lige of a compensation fee of 1,200,000 BFR on receipt by French Football Federation of the transfer certificate issued by UBSFA. Contract also included irrevocable option for full transfer of 4,800,000 BFR. The problem appeared when RC Lige had doubts about Dunkirk's solvency, so they did not send a transfer certificate, leading to a result to Bosman's suspension with preventing him from playing for the entire season. August 8, 1990, Bosman brought on the court of first instance an action against RC Lige with application of interlocutory decision ordering RC Lige and UBSFA to pay him an advance of 100,000 BFR per month until he found a new employer. Kurt made decision that RC Lige and UBSFA had to pay Bosman 30,000 BFR per month. In that period, Bosman signed up for Saint Quentin, Saint Denis de la Reunion, until he finally signed up by the third division Belgian club Olympique de Charlois. According to a national court, there were evidence of boycotting by all European clubs because of the court's order, so Bosman expanded his action also to UEFA. After arguing, UEFA and UBSFA claimed that UEFA regulations were not applied when transfer to Dunkirk fell through. If they had been applied, the transfer would not have been dependent on the payment of a transfer fee. They've stated that transfer rules do not concern the employment relationship between players and clubs, but the business relationship between clubs and the consequences of freedom, to a fear to a sporting federation. They all pointed out that nationality clauses are justified on non-economic grounds considering only the sport as such. First, they argued that those clauses serve to maintain the traditional link between each club and its country. Secondly, those clauses are necessary to create a sufficient pool of national players. Thirdly, they help to maintain a competitive balance. And finally, UEFA points out 3 plus 2 rule that had to be revised regularly. After all discussions, the court has made decision that such a restriction on the scope of the provisions in question must remain limited to its proper objective. If cannot, therefore be relied upon to exclude the whole sporting activity from the scope of the treaty, maintaining a balance between clubs by preserving a certain degree of equality and uncertainty as the result of encouraging the recruitment and training of young players must be accepted as legitimate. Development of training fees is indeed likely to encourage football clubs to seek new talent and train young players. The application of the transfer rules is not an adequate mean of maintaining financial and competitive balance in the world of football. And now, I know you're wondering what this 48 number means. Well, whole discussion circled around this number and that is Article 48 Treaty, which determined the condition under which professional sport players may engage in gainful employment. It must therefore be considered where the nationality clauses constitute an obstacle to freedom of movement for workers, in this case, football players. So the final decision of the court was based on this article. The decision how article changed the world are shown in the next clip.